Hello and welcome to the Borough Breakdown, brought to you by Scottish Building Society. We've moved away from the computer screens and we're actually broadcasting this from BT Murrayfield. And I'm very happy to be joined by Lions legend Hamish Watson and Scotland internationalist Blair Kinghorn. Oh, How's it going, guys? <laughs> <laughs> well, what am I? Just useless. Well, you know, Scotland international as well. Lions legend. <laughs> um, good session today. How's it going? Terrible. Terrible. <laughs> <laughs> good session today. Um... Good to blow the cobwebs away after a week off. Why were the cobwebs? No cobwebs. No cobwebs. We actually blew them off last Thursday and Friday, didn't we? Exactly. Yeah. Shouldn't be any cobwebs. No cobwebs. Weekends. Okay. And you come straight out of the gym. Um, which of you two lifts more? Who do you think? Oh, uh, well, I'm not going to guess. That's a Papi, Papi G question. <laughs> Um, the question is, who, <laughs> well, who, the better. question is, who wins in a wrestle? Who wins I mean, in a wrestle? We, we wrestle all the time. We do. How often? Uh, probably I'd say at least once a week. I would say once a training session. <laughs> we like to fight right before games as well, like the day before. That's good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Good prep. Yeah. Um, obviously, big game this week, eight and seventy-two cup. But uh, you know, lots of important meetings going on all the time. But um, most important one today, fines. Fines meeting. Um, fines meeting was just just a couple of hours ago. Mm-hmm. Did you get any? No. I got fined. Yeah, I was late for gym. Apparently. Who got the word? Allegedly. What was the Alleg- worst fine? Allegedly. Uh, Massive owes about a grand in yeah. fines, so I think he's had known to Fiji to avoid his fines. Yeah. Any good fines in your history in the club, Mesh? Mm. No, not really. I'm. Uh, he doesn't I'm, get fined. Yeah, I'm pretty on. I'm good at being on time. Um, he's a seasoned professional. He's not gonna. He doesn't mess up things. I allegedly was late for gym, which I don't think I was. Um, but no, no I, I haven't had a fine for a while actually. So, I think I got one maybe for like a late lap flow. Oh yeah, they were quite niggly. There's quite a few, yeah, yeah. niggly. Right. Who's the best like thrower that isn't a hooker in the club? Because I know like Boiler gets quite stuck into it after training. Yeah. I think Boiler played hooker though. Did he? Yeah, I think Boiler played hooker. So Judging by his stature. Yeah. It makes no, sense. Boiler played hooker when he was younger, so that's why he's he's pretty decent. So it's yeah. Derby week. Derby How week. excited is everyone? Very for? excited. Oh. The buzz around the club is really good. It's uh, I feel it. You can feel it. Yeah, you came in on a Monday and it's just poof, it's different, isn't it? The thing with these games is you don't want to beat the drum too early because otherwise boys will get too pumped too early. There's a classic case of that in the forward sometimes. Yeah. Not Stevie's, naming names. We can't names. obviously say on the pod, but Stevie's doing a, a really good drill at the moment, which is... Um, mm. were you sort of I, w- I witnessed it in the gym. It's the definition of beating the drum too early. Yeah. But It was actually last week and he was beating the drum. He loves beating. And so then you, just, you're, both, you're both more like chilled out about it in the yeah, day before yeah. getting to it. Uh, no, I, about, to be, to be uh, two fair, hours before. Yeah. To be fair, when when these games do come around, obviously there's a there's a special buzz around um, around the players, and we know how much it means to the fans, and it means a lot to us, us as well, because obviously they're all our friends in camp and on holidays and whatever. But for these games, I'm pretty sure we both feel the same way for the, for that 80 minutes. Mm-hmm. Um, is is it weird going up against like the Scotland guys? Because like some of them presumably might actually be good friends with you. So like, is it weird when you actually have to then sort of battle battle against them having been teammates? I found it weirder when I didn't know any of them, and then I got brought like I I got brought into camp, and like I'd maybe been a bit um, wide on the pitch, not wide, but you know what I mean, like a awesome. bit more n- niggle, a little bit more niggly on the pitch. What became on it? Like I remember, I remember when I, we played out here, and I like I, I shouted at Hank or something like that when he was playing for Glasgow, and then obviously became good pals with him. It's like a yeah. little dog cruise. I like playing against my pals, though. I find it yeah. fun. He doesn't like cracking the pitch, though. Very serious. Very serious, serious man. It's like that's why he's a lion. That's why he's a lion. Very serious man. Um, no, I, I, for, yeah, for that eight minutes, I like to yeah. do the job at hand. Yeah, damn right, damn hell. Get the job done, and then and then we'll have a laugh after as well. Yeah, we? but it's good fun. It's good fun playing. Against so no, no getting stuck into people. You just try and go and do your stuff. Yeah, I mean, like like you say, there's a lot of a um, lot of guys in that squad who are who we're all good mates with, um, and it adds a bit of spice to it, I suppose. And people like to talk about it before the game, uh, the sort of rivalries and stuff. But at the end of the day, it's just. Uh, Hopefully, gonna go out there and do what we need to do. It's just a game of code, and we're gonna go out there and win. Fair play. Mm-hmm. Um, who are the guys though, like 
really like getting stuck into like the puggy. Like, like, like my favorite Ben Muncaster likes really getting st- underneath people's skin. Yeah. I don't think necessarily he gets under, under skin. skin. He just gets. He gets underneath his own skin. Yeah, right? underneath his own skin. I've never seen a man so possessed before a game. I reckon. What was he doing? He said, um, he said "Was it with you?" I, was I, to the yeah. I just saw Benny out the corner of my eyes, like a contender, like slapped himself. I was like, "What's he doing?" And like he did it again. I was like, "Benny, why are you doing that?" And it's because his gum shield makes him gag, so he has to slap himself to. Do you want to take contact gag. so he doesn't gag? Yeah. It was, but we were. It was halftime of a game. Can't remember what game it was. And we were winning at halftime, and we were all the backs were sitting in the corner, nice and chilled. We discussed about everything that we needed to, and then at the corner of our eyes, just Moncaster is actually just going a Kimbo fist to the face. And then he went out, line break, try, and carved up. So yeah. it must work for him. It does look a bit mad if you're not expecting it, though. Yeah, yeah I can imagine. Yeah. Um, I'd keep well clear of that myself. I, I but, um, well, you get filled in. Yeah, I know exactly. You're a, t- you're a tiny. I know. Um, <laughs> also, you've both been, been here for a fair amount of time now, both Centurions. I mean, what are your sort of early memories of those? Oh, you've touched on it, but what, what are your sort of first memories of 72 Cup games? I think it takes a while to um, understand like the rivalry there because there's only two clubs in Scotland. I remember um, Robin Hislop still gives me a bit of a crack about this because I remember the uh, first few seasons, you know, not, not minding Glasgow that much and, you know, wanting the Scotland teams to do to do fairly well in that first year. And it's not until you sort of play in them and get involved in them and understand, like, the bit of niggle behind them, a bit of history behind it. And um, that's when it, that's when it's sort of the rivalry, like, for me, became a bit of a reality and knowing how much we... Uh, these games mean to us I guess yeah. because for the first year yeah, first year or two I wasn't it was just another game whereas now they do they do mean a bit more and I think they do mean a bit more for all the players and helps having I suppose guys like us who have been around for a bit and definitely people like Gilco mm. Rambo Villa and those guys who have sort of been here for um, for a long time now uh, so yeah it helps them and those sort of guys around because they know how much the rivalry means and for the young guys who are going to hopefully get a taste of it um, it's awesome for them as well to play in these huge games so, uh, I agree. Yeah, you know, for a few of the young guys as well, it'll be their first time playing sort of with a crowd at Murrayfield. Guys mm. like Conor Boyle would have played behind closed doors, yeah, and things like that. I mean, Penny. how how sort of what's the sort of experience when you're out there with sort of twenty thousand plus? It's yeah, it's, an, it's fantastic. No, it's definitely it's definitely um, a cool feeling. Like you say, mm. a lot of those boys uh, have been playing at the dam, where we're getting like seven thousand, but. To come here with twenty odd thousand, or hopefully we'll get twenty five thousand, and it'll be um, it'll be a really cool experience for them because they wouldn't have, they might not have played in front of that many fans before. So I think that'll be awesome for some of the young guys. And uh, well, a lot of them got their first like caps when it was during COVID periods, so then they weren't used to any fans, and mm-hmm. then all of a sudden we got limited fans. Then we were at damn health, and then it was a lot of fans, and then here it'll be even more fans. Yeah. So you know, it's just gradual escalation. But how how did you when you were first like <clears throat> breaking into the team? Like how did you find? Like playing with bigger crowds as it got sort of, the, I guess the stages get bigger and bigger as you go through your career. I remember the first time playing in an 1872 game, it was probably it was the biggest crowd I played in front of. And I remember the first thing I did was drop the ball over our line and they scored. Positive. So it was a good good first start. Um, very positive. Uh, it was it was a bit it was a bit mad. You kind of walk out and you don't you're not used to seeing that many like faces almost and the noise. <laughs> You know, you know. What I, mean. I know what you mean. You know what I mean. And the, when when you're not used to, it, I feel like you see less. Almost like when you're at the training pitch, I feel like I can see everything. Whereas when I first started playing in front of a big crowd, I felt a little bit caged in. But then you do get used to it. And then when the fans are behind you and you're winning, and you like, if you do something beast or someone scores. I remember when Darcy scored in the corner, and it just erupted. Those are the moments you play for. Those, you know, those are the ones that you that you remember, and you, you want to have memorable days, don't you? You do, because you look back at it, and those are the ones that stick. And if you got a great bunch of lads, and you win big games, yeah. have a beer you, after. You never know how many of these games you're gonna play. It goes quick, you know. It does go it quick. Does go quick. <laughs> he's he's already 28. Yeah. I'm 28 now. I've been here. 28. 11th season. Yeah. Is that right? 11th season. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Started when I was 17. I'm 23. Mm-hmm. 23. You're 23. <laughs> 24. 25. 25. COVID years didn't count. Yeah, um, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, memorable moments. What have been some of your favourite 1872 Cup games? Or just like little bits that have happened? Uh, 
I liked it when Dino scored in the corner and we won in the 80th minute. See, yeah. I hate that. Not, not no one from a personal level. Remember, I got taken off after four minutes. Oh, yeah, uh, that Berge, was bad. Bergie got red carded. Bergie got red carded, yeah. <laughs> so I didn't hate the moment. I love the moment because it's a big moment in Edinburgh rugby history. Dino scoring in the corners and winning with 40 men for the whole game. Yeah. But I was, you got taken I off. Was really uh, I can imagine. Bergie. I said, I do remember. I don't, I don't blame anyone actually for taking me off apart from Bergie. Yeah. Bergie's fault. Um, Obviously, this year, quite a lot riding on it, more than just the, the cup, I guess. I mean, how's the sort of focus been going into it, knowing there's sort of, well, I guess, three three things on the line? Three things on the line. We haven't spoken too much about it. I think it's just focusing, trying to focus on ourselves and just trying to take yeah. um, take each game as it comes. Obviously, we know it's it's a huge game to get Champions Cup next season, but uh, it's not really been spoken too much no. about, I think. You don't want to put too much of a burden onto, like, one game you take it as it is. Yeah. Um, it's no different to any other game. Obviously, there's going to be a bit more puggy and emotion behind it just because it's the nature of it. Um, but you don't want to burden yourself with too much implications. And we go out there with that and we'll we'll get the dividends. Blair, mm. mm-hmm. from Amy, what position do you most enjoy playing? Interesting. Uh, ten. How, how are you finding kinda have, You kind of have to say 10. Yeah. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Second row. No. no. Uh, yeah, 10, definitely. Um, how, how have you found sort of, it's pretty much been a year now that you've been. Yeah. How have you found it? No, I think it's been, I think it's been really good. I've really enjoyed it. I've kind of, uh, I've enjoyed the extra responsibility that I've been given, um, trying to lead the team on the pitch, um, trying to lead our attack. Um, um, I said M like five times there. Uh, yeah, I'm re- I'm enjoying. Right, I'm going to start that bit. Again. Oh no, I'll speak for you. No, yeah, I'm. I'm re- I think seeing um, Smog's progression over the last year is actually been amazing. Thanks, man. And it's a compliment to yourself as well because he's worked bloody hard at it, and uh, he's been. If you see the way our attacks playing at the moment, he's been class. I spoke about it in um, in an interview, I think, before a Scotland game, and see what Smoggy's done in such a short period of time and how how he's. Sort of adapts to playing ten. There's actually been, um, yeah, it's credit to you, and uh, yeah, I'm sure the guys around you maybe make it a, make it easier for you as well. Yeah, definitely. You know, like, uh, oh yeah, I knew he, <laughs> he's always got my inside, doesn't he? But genuine, Smoggy. I think, all, I think um, all the Edinburgh fans know how good it's been to watch Smoggy at the dam this season and pulling the strings. We've got a fan question from Robin. Um, Who's better over the ball, you mm. or Conor Boyle? That's an interesting one. Um, that's, <laughs> that's a bit of a weird one as well. That's a code um, question right there. Yeah, code. Uh, CB7, let's just go with that. CB7. Well, he changed I'm, his Instagram I'm being, handle. I'm being, I'm being yeah. nice. CB100? No, he's changed it. No. CB7. Oh, yeah. Thinks he's some sort of like Cristiano Ronaldo sort of figure. Yeah. But how, how good has it been seeing guys like Boyle and Mancaster break through this year? I think, I think it's been awesome. Um, they've kind of been around. Moncaster obviously came at the start of last season, um, but Boyle's kind of been around for a while and to see him progress um, as much as he has has been awesome. And Benny, Benny coming in with, <laughs> brought more than just rugby, he's brought a whole package with him. Mm. Um, he's a great person to have around the club, yeah. but it's so good to see all the young boys coming through. Yeah. I think um, the amount of injuries we had in, that, in the back row, especially at the start of the season, mm. I think it was pretty... Uh, it, was, it looked like it was going to be pretty tough, but then those sort of guys have stepped up and uh, been great for the club. And like you say, someone like Boiler, who's you know supported the club since since a young age, and he won't mind us saying that he he loves this club and he's a bit of a Norse. And it's great to see him. Uh, it's great to see him like do so well because he, he he's an Edinburgh boy through and through, and Benny as well, who's he's been um, <laughs> he's been good for the, for the club Benny. environment as well. Yeah. Some character. Some character. Should get him on. Should get him on here. He's already, him on the, he's already been on, on it. Oh. oh yeah, that shows how much. Has this, is this not the first episode? <laughs> we're not the we're not the grand well, opening. The pilot. You've got to build up to the big guns. Oh. Cammy asks, "What's your favourite takeaway?" What well, do you never have on. I time? I obviously don't usually eat takeaways because I'm Nando's. You like Nando's? I, if I'm well, going, Pepe's, Pepe's is good. That's just around the corner from mine. Yeah. I still haven't tr- uh, haven't checked it. It's literally on your corner. It's on my corner. Um, but if I'm going out for food, it's sushi. There's a place in Edinburgh called Yamato. It's Fule Beast. Like a miso aubergine, some dragon roll. Some aubergine? Prawn, some, yeah, it's class. Don't knock, to, don't no, knock no. anything until you try it twice. <laughs> nah, no, man. That's what a wise man told me once. 
What don't obviously try it twice. Twice. What things have you <laughs> not tried twice? <laughs> <laughs> um, Joe asks, who is the worst dressed at the club? Oh, easy. Rambo. Yeah. R- Rambo Gilko. The boys who wear their free gear the whole time. Yeah. He's say no, pretty. Say no more. He's pretty swaggy. You got a little bit of dad swag. Cheers, bro. Um, but who else is the worst dressed? Uh, Rambo and Gilco always wear like their gym trainers with their boot cut jeans, which just doesn't do it for me. Sneeze. Sneeze. Sneakers and jeans. Sneakers. Yeah. Some sort of American dude. Sneeze. 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 I heard that one before. Nice. Right. Nice. Not gonna use it. <laughs> Best dressed? <laughs> Best dressed. Mm. <sighs> Tough one. I like some of the Garm Savs wears. Uh, Savs pretty swaggy bloke. I love Moncaster's Garms. Yeah, Moncaster, he's pretty Like cool. the like the double baggy, the double t shirt. Baggy t shirt that goes down to what? Yeah. Mid forearm yeah. and flares yeah. and then some Unition, old, old sky shoes. Yeah, brilliant. <laughs> Who's got the best chat? Best chat. You go. These are the best chat. Um, you know who I'm enjoying quite a lot at the moment. It's not. It's the. It's this is mm-hmm. this isn't quick fire, but it's um, <laughs> Skewy. Skewy's got a funny yeah, chat. Awful funny. chat, but also, you know, good. horrifically bad. Yeah, it's good. horrifically bad. It's good. Yeah, Skewy. That actually, talking of shoe, there is a question for you both about shoe. Yeah. Are we um, going to cut to that now? That's nice. Yeah. Quick fires. Nice. Do you get jealous of shoe having a chant? Everyone singing his name when he gets the ball, and no one, no one else in the club. It's not really singing, is it? Well, I know, but you know, do, do you get jealous of the um, oh, Jealous? No, I don't I mean. Well, no, not really going to show you. I just go, Bottom I go, ball. boo. I know, yeah, bro, boo. yeah. When every time I just, boo. yeah, boo and scream. Yeah. So, so oh, not really. <laughs> don't get jealous. Quite fun. Yeah, but, oh, I mean, it's, it's my eleventh season, so like. Oh, I mean, what chant would, would you want? Loads of chants that they sing like the pub and stuff after the games about like me and Smog, but like. I wouldn't mind like a smoggy. Really. Okay. Okay. Um, nice. But no, we don't, basically. It's the quick, gen. It's the quick fire, <laughs> the quick fire answer to that. Amy asks, what is due, what's been your favourite game this season? I have two. Go for it. Scarlet's at home, first game of the season, we won. At the dam, the sun was shining. And a uh, heinous game in South Africa against yeah, the Sharks. Sharks, yeah, the Sharks way was good fun. Cool stadium as well. Cool stadium, um, awesome stadium. Um, been away with the boys for a week. Had a lot of fun. It was a horrible, like it was a horrible wasn't, spectacle, but we controlled the game pretty well. It wasn't a gunner's day. It was good. It was a good. We victory. just we, we found a way to win. And it, uh, after the game, beers in the team room in the stadium. It was, some beers. Uh, beers. Must have missed the invite. Yeah, you missed the invite. Uh, yeah. yeah, it was good. That was good. Sharks beer as well? Or? Yeah, no, yeah, definitely. I agree with them. It was a good fun, eh? Sharks was cool. Yeah, it was. Yeah. It must have been quite cool. It was, it was a cool, it was a really good win as well. I think we were the first team, I think, to win. Uh, first Northern Hemisphere team. To win away. Oh, yeah. I, you well, still, you haven't done your quickfire round yet. You had one, <laughs> well, you had one question no, in your quick, quickfire the round. The quickfire round has gone poorly. Well, but, um, but they've been nice answers, so that's why I haven't, made, why I haven't pushed you. Yeah. He's, he's, like, he's like a river, he's trying to flow with the, with the interview. Quickfire, worst right. chat. Well, who, who's, Gilco. Who's got the worst chat? Gilco's got the worst chat. Skew. <laughs> yeah, best and worst. Yeah. <laughs> I can get on board with that. <laughs> yeah, what we do is then cut that bit back. So it looks like on. Yeah. Um, I'd, I'd like to finish on the same question. We're finishing already? Good. What was the quick fire? I mean, it's, I mean, it's four o'clock. But it's been so much fun. Well, it has been fun. Right. <clears throat> right, lads. Thanks for having thank us, mate. Thanks for taking the time out. And I hope the rest of the prep for the big game goes well. And best of luck on Saturday. Thanks. Thanks. Looking, looking forward to it. Yeah, I'll invoice you. Yeah. Cheers. Thank you for tuning in. Um, and a huge thank you to Scottish Building Society for making the show possible. We'll be back hopefully at a similar time and hopefully after a nice win in the 1872 Cup. We'll see you then.